making though, right? Is that well, almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> I, we kind of jumped in doing research, and um, and I, I guess you could say that's when we started. But we were still kind of like, you know, but um, yeah. But it took the quarantine and the and the lockdown to get me to really get it and finish the film. So. Oh, well. <laughs> And congratulations for finally having it out in the world. Thank you. And are, are there any questions to start with? There's one right here. This microphone is coming your way. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for a great film. Um, John, have you ever considered secretly or otherwise? <laughs> living somewhere besides the Bay Area. And um, <laughs> what are the merits and demerits of being who you are in the Bay Area? In other words, how is it great to be in the Bay Area for you? And how are there challenges to being a musician in the Bay Area as opposed to, say, New York? <laughs> That's a great series of questions. <laughs> Before I answer that, can you hear me with this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'd like to also just say a couple words too before I get to your questions. I want to also express my gratitude, uh, first and foremost, to Ashley and Catherine for for ten years of a lot of, of work in, in crafting, uh, uh, beautifully crafting the film. It, uh, needless to say, it's a great honor for me, and uh, I appreciate it immensely. So uh, my family too, who Catherine already um, recognized, but uh, Aida and, and, and um, Adelina and Joao uh, are, are the center of everything that I do. So stand up, you guys. I mean, this thing allowed us to be with the camera, you know, in bed and everywhere, you know, basically, in the bathroom. No. no. <laughs> so, so, just thank you, and, and, and also to my um, colleagues, my, my band members. I know this is not the Academy Awards. I'm not, I'm not going to thank everybody, but, but it really, it's important for me because those band members have been with me for a long time. Some of them, like John Calloway, 45 years we've been working together. And, yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, all of you, because without an audience, without a public, without a community to, to play for and to be inspired by, we're just basically singing in the shower. It's not what's going on. Um, and we owe a lot, a great debt to you, to the public, to the local radio people. Jesse Varela is here, but the local radio folks. <laughs> And they, uh, they also connect us with you, and we, we without without that, you know, again, we're we're not we're not we're, we're swimming upstream. So now, what were your questions again? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you know, the questions. Um, I remember the second question you asked, which about the demerits and the merits. It's all good living in the Bay Area. I don't have any demerits to mention. But living in the Bay Area has been incredible for me. I love New York. You know, New York is the mecca for jazz and the mecca for Afro-Caribbean music. I love New York. But since about 1978 was my first trip to New York, and I went there, and my friends who would get up at midnight and go party, and, mm -hmm. and after about two days of that, I was done. I was done. <laughs> so I've, I've always loved going to New York. It's an, it's, an, it's an amazing place for inspiration. I never for one second entertained the thought of living there. <laughs> and, and the Bay Area, I feel very fortunate to, to live in the Bay Area for the obvious reasons, some of them which I mentioned in the film. We just have a community here that is very progressive, that is quite diverse, and I've grown to appreciate that over the years. Every passing day, I appreciate that more and more. We took it for granted when we were little. You think that the world is like that because you have everything on your little block. And pretty soon you realize, a rude awakening, that the world is not like that. So I appreciate the Bay Area a great deal. Um, and then the first, what was the first question? I didn't forget. No, no, that was the second one, wasn't it? No, no, no. Okay, well, I answered both in the same. In the, yeah. Yeah, okay. no, no. Never, not once. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Comments on, yeah, went right here. 
Yes, I give you. Raise your just raise your hand and we'll bring you a microphone. I was always interested in taking the course that you gave about uh, the roots of well, the progression of salsa from the roots that you that you talked about in the film. Are you teaching that class anymore, or can I inspire you to? <laughs> no and no. <laughs> oh. I don't think to be rude. It's just that um, you know, when the pandemic hit, I I, I quit all of my teaching jobs, and um, we just needed to be together, be in the house, and be supporting each other, and you know, um, I realized from stopping working and, and all the gigs came to a halt. We had a lot of things canceled in 2020 mm -hmm. and all of the concerts came to a halt and the teaching, I, I, I stopped and all that. And I thought that after about two months of that, I'd be through my humble bank savings and I would be in really hot water. And that didn't happen. I realized that we were you know, spending as much money as we were making, basically, when it comes to gas and eating out and all this stuff, we were spending a lot of money. So after six months, after a year, I said, wow, there's still a little bit of money left in the bank as we were cooking at home and that whole thing. And uh, it, it meant, it, it still means a lot more to me to be home with my family than out every day running across the bay to teach. I was teaching in San Mateo one day, in San Francisco one day, in, in Berkeley one day, and I'd be yeah. going all day and eating out, eating lunch out, eating dinner out, coming back late. So I'm home now. And, um, you know, we don't get along that well all the time at home. But, but we get it out. And, it out. and it's, it's, it's wonderful to be home. So I don't have any plans to go back to teaching right away. Right now I'm teaching one day a week. Actually, I have, I have two students, two private students. One is a bass player at the jazz school here in Berkeley, right down the street. And the other is here today. It's my little, my little cousin, Ilan. Ilan, stand up. Where are you? There he is. Don't try it. Well, I'll ask you to become in the good company. Yeah, Any questions? Yeah, there's one. Well, first, let me say that, John, uh, um, Ashley, and, and Captain, you guys did a fantastic job. This oh. is such a beautiful, beautiful film, and it really does speak to a very, very important chapter that I believe that really was uh, the post-Santana era, if you will. Because, you know, for all of us yeah. that you know grew up here in the Bay Area, we grew up with a sound and a music mm -hmm. that came from, you know, people like the great Cal Jader, Mongo Santa Maria, you know, Benny Velarde. And I think, John, that one of the things that, that I wanted to ask you about is that, in a way, you really are reflective of a lot of the musicians that really, you know, work the Chuchipito sir, that's suffered and sacrifice. And, you know, to a certain extent, you speak to the fact that, you know, we can be more than just a footnote. And I think that that's one of the things that I really wonder about. And in this day and age, as we see the music changing, I mean, drastically, you know, with digitization, you know, with what's going on with the mechanical sounds that are being composed, you know, how do you see the future of Latin music and what you are bringing to it and perhaps things that you want to aspire to with your music that you haven't done? Yeah. Do you recognize that voice? Yeah. 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 Just, just Jesse Varela, Jesse Chi Varela. <laughs> <laughs> that voice is iconic on Sundays. You go to the dollar. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, thank you, Jesse. I already thanked you. Uh, thank you again. We've been for, for decades now just supporting all that we do. There's no way to thank you for that. Um, you know, for me, the future is the past in, in, in a lot of ways because so many artists and people just are want to throw away the past and want to just, you know, oh, we got to do something new. You got It's hard to invent anything under the sun these days without acknowledging the past, our ancestors, and, and appreciating, knowing where we come from, knowing what those things are, and then building on that. 
So really, it, it, the past is, is more important than ever now because we live in a society that doesn't value it. The, the, the thing here is like me, it's, it's about me now, what I'm going to do that's different from what they did. I don't care what they did before, and I don't adhere to that. I think it's very important to know what was done before, to honor it, to see the wisdom in it. And it's connected to the whole planet. It's connected to the environment, how we treat the planet, how we um, honor the, the environment. This, this society just disrespects it. I, I'm sorry to say, in general, I mean, the official fonts, you know, everybody here knows that. We're in Berkeley, so you guys know <laughs> what's going on with, 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 with climate change, et cetera. It's all connected because our ancestors were not about that. They were about honoring the environment, the medicinal use of herbs, uh, bringing the presence of the ancestors into the room. Those are those are not things you're going to find on a, on a drum machine or on a computer, but those are, those are things we learn from the elders and from nature. And so my uh, future is, is really in the past in a lot of ways. We try, we build on it. We, we, we write compositions that deal with what we're feeling and our social reality, what we're experiencing now, and documenting what's going on now as opposed to pushing it under the rug, which is what a lot of people want to do because it's so embarrassingly absurd and criminal. People don't, don't want to talk about it. You want to have this critical race theory a revisionist history, all of that. And the music won't let that happen. The traditional music doesn't let that happen. Well, that's what I want to do. Thank you. That said, I, I do have a, a, a small announcement, which is relevant for you, Jess. I was going to tell you this. I promise I was going to tell you this tomorrow. Um, which is that we have a new CD that's going to come out on the first of the year. It's something that, again, thanks to the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, we were you know, not doing much. And so we, we finished up uh, recordings that we had finished and uh, started and, and were not finished over the last 10, 12 years that, we're sitting, that are sitting in the vault. We finished them all up. So I've got about three CDs with the material, and the first one is a tribute to Puerto Rico. It's going to come out on the 1st of January, and it's called. It's going to be called Filosofia Caribeña Volume 3. Volume 2 came out in 2012. Like I said, but it's volume, volume 3 now, in, in 10 years later. But it's called A Puerto Rico del Alma, to Puerto Rico from, from, from the heart. And um, the first three months, the first quarter of the year, all 100% of the sales from that CD are going to go to a place, a very, a place very dear to our heart in Puerto Rico called La Goico Community Center. It's a place that was founded by Tito Matos, a great friend of ours who died earlier this year, unfortunately very young, a pioneering planero who plays on the record. And it's the place that he founded. They, they took a school. This is emblematic because they're closing hundreds of schools in Puerto Rico, part of the privatization of what's going on in Puerto Rico, privatizing beaches, uh, uh, closing schools, and then selling them to corporations who want to flip them. Mm. It's ridiculous what's going on in Puerto Rico. So they got a school that had been closed, and they got the whole community involved. They cleaned it up. They painted it. They got a 501c3. They got it from the city. They're a nonprofit, and they're a beautiful organization lifting up their community in uh, San Mateo de Cangrejos in Santurce area of Puerto Rico. So all of the first quarter sales are going to go directly to that location. So just let me know.